What is good? We are back with another installment of a FF Dynasty YouTube show podcast thingamajig. Bipod. <laughs> and we're back to the bipod again. <laughs> Big Cuz still ailing over his uh, loss of his appendix. We had a funeral. Uh, we buried it. You know, trying to move on. Oh, he's gotta got it in a jar on his shelf. Gotta have yeah. some closure at those things. And uh, so, but Big Co has hours of content planned from all the time on his hands. Uh, so be sure he's to look out. He's been trading on. it up. He's been trading yeah. it up. Be sure to look at that up for our on the, for the Patreon users. And uh, users. anyway, Jay, Jay Wade, how you doing over there? How's it going? Man, I'm, bu- I'm I did a I did a huge party pump before we came on. It was mm. called yard work, so I'm hoping I'm looking swole, but I'm also looking tired. Yard work is the worst. Yeah, Ugh, is- I miss my condo. <laughs> yard work is no BN. <laughs> Nay. All right, shall we do it? What are we doing? Biggest uh, biggest wieners, right? Biggest wieners. Yep. <laughs> Size, shape, color. Nick Foles wins. Does he always win the? Yeah, Seems weird. So. Nick, there's got to be someone else with a rumored to have a very large. Well, I mean Lexington Steel. Yeah, um, he doesn't play football. Peter North. I Platt thought we were coming with football. Biggest so. wieners from the NFL draft. <laughs> well, my wiener, my wiener is 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 being left out of this and i think we yeah, should i don't neither of us play in the nfl so get into biggest winners and losers oh, winners biggest winners and losers just some losers mostly winners because we're winners we're whiners or wieners my name is whiner <laughs> um so we're gonna do some biggest winners from the draft here not necessarily going to talk too many rookies, but basically guys that may have avoided uh or or grew exponentially f- from uh, adding pieces in the NFL draft, but mostly right. guys who may have dodged some bullets. Uh, the point of this exercise lines. is is to figure out how these dra- rookies impacted the rest of the league. You know, we go back and check out our NFL draft reaction show where we talk nothing but rookies, and we're going to be mocking it up before you fuck it up till the cows come home moving forward. And uh, so, so be on the lookout of that. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe below, you know, but don't thumbs down it. You know, just go, just go comment. If you got something you got hate in your heart, put it in the comments, baby. Let's go. Yeah. And if we, if we miss anything or you agree or disagree, throw that in the comments as well. Uh, let's get started here. Unless you got anything else to add. Nah, let's do it. All right. Action. <laughs> Well, so there was a lot of chatter about Chase Edmonds and whether or not he was going to survive. Now he did take a slight decline from the uh, James Conner signing, so he's a winner with a caveat here. Uh, that oh, I thought you'd be so pumped. I thought you were just going to be like he dodges all every round bullet, which I predicted. Uh, they only, you know, they only had two high picks and they got a lot of holes to fill. Uh, usually you would put a wiener in there, but Speaking we're going to go with steel. we're, we're going to go with winners. And Chase Edmonds was a pretty decent winner here. Uh, they did add Rondell Moore. He could, if used properly, take some breadcrumbs, some sprinkles away from from Chase Edmonds for maybe catching some things out of the backfield, doing some gadgety stuff out of there. But Chase really survives. James Conner is no slouch, although some people love to hate on him. I think he can be productive if he's healthy. Uh, but huge for Chase Edmonds and huge uh, for anybody who held on to him or, you know, acquired for that second or third round price that you could have uh, possibly procured him at. I know I did in a few places. I was adamant about getting him. We did a Deontay Johnson versus Chase Edmonds and people, it's one of the dynasty dorks or one of those guys really had a bad thing to say about it. There's no way that Chase Edmonds could be here. It's like, well, if he dodges all these bullets, Chase Edmonds could be right up there with Deontay Johnson. And I would assume that he probably is right now in dynasty startups because everybody needs a running back. And that was the whole point of that exercise. And now Chase, even with uh, Kenyon Drake last year, was an RB2 for a good portion of the season. Uh, let you down a little bit when he got the full – reins of everything but i think he's going to be a nice little piece and like i said it's always hard to find running backs so after you get those big guys off the board chase edmonds 
in those early off season r- rookie drafts or mo- sorry, startup drafts like mocks that we were doing was always a guy you had to go searching for. I don't think you're going to have to, you're not going to have to search any longer for Chase Edmonds. Yeah. He's uh, and, and maybe he becomes too popular and not, not a guy that you want to put on your, on your list here. But for right now, Chase Edmonds is a big winner. Big wiener. He uh, he's at seventy three ADP currently. Now this ADP hasn't changed uh, since the draft happened, so that's that's definitely going up. He's nineteen spots behind Deontay Johnson for reference. Stocks going up on Chase Edmonds. Hopefully it doesn't go too far, like you said. Uh, shall we move along? Yeah. Bum, bum, ba, da. <laughs> bum, bum, ba, da, da, da. Who's next up on the prices right here? Uh, we got Atlanta. I know these this is another popular uh, after the draft dodging bullets. Tweets were all over the place. Edmonds was one of them. Mike Davis. Uh, the Falcons picked him up. They also picked up Arthur Smith as their head coach in the offseason coming from uh, Tennessee. Had a nice really brought Derrick Henry into his own uh, right and really used him properly. Mike Davis got a light shined on, you know, how decent he could be or how good he could be decent. I'm not going to slight the man, how good he could be um, with, you know, being showcased and, and being worked. Now, hopefully you cashed in on that uh, really in the peak of, of Mike Davis. And if you didn't, if you didn't, if you just held and now you're getting, you're probably going to get one more shot at Mike Davis here of really being a contributor for your fantasy team to either just ride that, ride the lightning out. And, and if you have a good fantasy team or if your fantasy team's looking like it's not so great, uh, you know, try to move on and get what you can for Mike Davis, but the window is going to reopen here. And, you know, in startup drafts, depending on where the ADP is, which is why you're going to have to follow along and subscribe. So when we start doing startup drafts, we can tell you whether or not you need to take Mike Davis because it's all about value. It's not about the player. Um, Mike Davis is not probably going to be somebody that I want to draft on my team necessarily, but if I have him left over that I'd, I'd definitely put him on the team because in all actuality, you're probably only getting one season, but if you can get him in the right spot, then I have no problem with taking the one year flyer on him and, and seeing kind of what can happen. He's not going to die after this year, obviously, but uh, probably not going to be in the same opportunity. The Falcons drafted uh, no one of note. They did pick up JV and Hawkins as an undrafted free agent, which he's about a buck 83 fun, fun little guy, but way different than what Mike Davis does. They obviously still have some guys on that roster, uh, but, you know, there's some decently high picks on that offensive line. Matt Ryan is is a pretty decent quarterback, although some people like to hate on him. They still have Julio. They still have Calvin Ridley, and they picked up Pitts. So they should have a pretty dynamic offense. There should be red zone opportunities. Defense could still be a mess and still have to score a lot of points. Um, so we don't you know, know all signs gonna... pointing up for Mike Davis. Go ahead. We don't know if they're going to keep Julio. There's, there's trade talks of that going on. If they keep Julio, obviously – uh, Matt Ryan is a huge winner out of this uh, draft for your redraft pleasure. Um, you said Mike Davis isn't going to die after this year. He is 28, so he'll be 29. That's almost dead for running back. So wow. I think I think you got some life back into Mike Davis. Would you be trying to, to ship him out? Like, I know you referenced, I, I think- like, whether or not you, you maybe need him, but it's never going to – I don't know if the value is going to be as high. Maybe well, I, I think you let him play point. because – yeah, I think I think but, I think he might they, get to the. They, they could sign Todd Gurley back. You know they haven't they, yet. They could, but, they could, but I don't. I mean, by the time by the end of the season last year, Todd Gurley looked like a shell of himself. He didn't look right. Adrian pro- Peterson still free. Okay. I just feel like he might not dodge all. There's still bullets maybe for him to that's, dodge. I mean, they could sign somebody that. That's fair. The new the new regime did go out and basically specifically target Mike Davis. It seemed like and put him on the squad. So. I mean, yeah, they certainly could bring in some more competition when they see how that room shakes out. Uh, I would probably be holding. I don't. I don't know how much. I mean, obviously, if somebody did something something silly like anywhere near the first round, but that, that that's not a real thing. And then maybe if you felt like your team was really bad and could get a second round rookie pick for this year or next year for Mike Davis, I guess so. Um, but I'm probably going to let him get on the field and and, and play and, and start scoring points and wait for that team who really needs a running back to say, or if I'm myself, if I think my team's half decent to uh, give myself a nice little flex play or RB2 play even possibly. So, all right, shall we move along? Yeah, let's go to a loser. Loser. The who? The her. Well, people, 
probably didn't love this guy in general anyway anymore. His his luster had worn off. His welcome has worn off to a lot of people. But Melvin Gordon, definitely a little bit of a loser on that Broncos team. Um, they did just lose uh, their left guard or right they, tackle. They, or? Lost their, they lost their right tackle, Juwan James, right after coming back yeah. to a torn Achilles. So that's a huge bummer. for. So that is a bummer. But the bigger bummer is Javante Williams. Right. Oh. Right. The writing was a little bit on the walls here, but and nobody liked Melvin Gordon. This is a pretty obvious one, but yeah, this this they do he has one year left on his deal. So it sucks for the two of them there this year because they're probably gonna use both of them. And it definitely sucks for your Melvin Gordon for this year, which you were you know, maybe banking on having him be, you know, somewhere close to top Melvin. So that's definitely a hit to Melvin. Are, are you concerned about Cortland Sutton at all coming off this ACL? They didn't upgrade the quarterback position. I know you kind of, you, you like, I mean, Teddy. I think, I, I think if, if Teddy's, if Teddy's on the field and Teddy plays, which there's a decent chance that he wins that, that, that gig out to me, because maybe they don't want the, some of the things that drew lock does for you with the, the bad stuff that drew lock gives you and maybe drew lock gets better there. You know, guys can improve. Um, but he was really in a situation last year, drew lock. That is where, you know, he, ha- he was surrounded by some good, pretty good talent, albeit, you know, some rookies, but still pretty decent talent. And now you get Cortland back. So I don't know. I'm not really worried about Cortland Sutton. He would be a buy for me right now. I think if Teddy plays, you saw, obviously it's a little bit different offense with Joe Brady and, and rule down there, but he was able to facilitate 3000 yard receivers. So like, I'm not, I'm not all that worried about, about that Cortland Sutton or uh, really any of those guys, Jerry Judy would be a buy for me as well. So I think that this this offense is really just like a decent quarterback away from being really good, or at least decent fantasy wise, and then a, a good quarterback away from being fantastic fantasy wise with all the weapons that they have. So, uh, no, I'm not not concerned about it. All right. So not- listen, if Lock if Lock beats out Bridgewater, that means he take it. He's taking a step forward, and there there is a, enough good traits with Lock, but do they outweigh the bad? And I'm you know. And is is Fangio going to put his job on the line with those bad traits? That GM isn't going anywhere. They just brought him in. But Fangio could be out of a head coaching job. So that's kind of the way I see it. All right. You want to take it over to Baltimore? Baltimore. So, you know, big wieners over there. Yeah. Um, Depending on what team you like, they might be big whiners. Um, Yeah. The Harbaugh's, they, they definitely could be big whiners depending on what camp you're in. Uh, But uh, Lamar, Lamar, big winner here. Uh, We can hate on Lamar all we want throwing wise, but you know, he's never been surrounded with weapons like this. They bring in Sammy Walker. Like, you know, he was throwing with uh, Willie's Willie Sneed and miles Boykin, which, you know, I don't hate miles Boykin at all, Uh, but you know, not elite weapons with Marquise Brown, you know, being a little undersized and maybe not exactly what that offense needed. But now I feel like with all the weapons around him, he could be exactly what that offense is. It could need a little spark. Uh, now you bring in Tylen Wallace, the later round pick, you sign Sammy Watkins, you draft for Shaw Bateman. You're going to have a great running game. Still they have your just, boy from Texas, right? Uh, yeah, they got Devin DuVernay. DuVernay. Um, and, the, you know, they just keep bringing in offensive linemen and, and, fixing that problem that the, the Ravens are perennial or a team that just always figures out how to bring in the best value pieces and how to make it work. And, and they kind of never really rebuild. They just kind of reload and say whatever you want about Lamar, but he's never had a ch- an opportunity to be surrounded by uh, as much talent as he's going to have right now. Um, right. So that's, that's definitely exciting for, for him. It's exciting. And there's a challenge, right? Cause they haven't extended him and they they do have the fifth year options. So I think they, they did pick his fifth year in, option up. Sure. Yeah. I mean, how could you not? But like, you know, there's no reason for him to fail now, right? They brought in weapons. They tr- they're trying to give him weapons and surround him with players through free agency, th- through the draft. And if he performs well, then he's going to make himself a lot of money. So, and if he doesn't, then I guess I could see them moving on, but it still feels like they'd be really hard. I mean, he's going to be fine. They're going to win games just like they always do, and they're going to be in the mix just like they always are. So I don't know what's going to happen with Lamar, but should should be stock up Lamar for this season anyway If with all these weapons they added. Now, there's got to be a loser here, right? He's not, sure. it's not like 
it's not like anybody's excited about wide receivers, you know, getting thrown the ball from Lamar Jackson. And maybe that's because they haven't had a ton of great ones. But one of these guys is going to be his guy. One of these guys is going to catch balls. There's going to be one or two losers. You got any idea? Like, who's your favorite? Who's your least favorite wide receiver out of this? Bunch? Oh, I have, I have no idea. I mean, it's got to probably be Mark Andrews right now. I mean, he's been his guy, you know, not as great of a season. I don't think last year as the season before, uh, but you know, I look to him to get back and, and, you know, help control the middle of the field, but Bateman can, can help you do that. And Tylon and, and, uh, and Marquise can, can help take the top off and you still have a Sammy who could do all sorts of different things. If he's there and DeVernay's a fast player who, who can do a lot of different things. So, it's interesting, but the, you know, the, obviously some of the, the, the amount of wide receivers and just, you know, the passing volume, they're a little bit more of a running team and all those kind of things. So it definitely hurts a little bit of the stock of any of the receivers that are there. So I, you know, I, I can get behind that. I, a little bit, I still, still, like I said, still down to take Rashad Bateman in the, in the late first, I was never throwing him really up there as the WR two or three, but sure. Uh, yeah. We always had him around the end of the first and, you know, I can't, I can't pass on him just because he went to the Ravens. I think that's fair. I was going to say that maybe this going to the Ravens did create a little bit of value with Bateman, but I mean, I was just in a draft and people are still taking Bateman where they like Bateman. I don't, I don't think he's, yeah. he's still going before I want to take him. You know, I don't think there's any value on Bateman. Maybe some drafts will get pushed down, but all right, let's, uh, let's take it to some winners. The favorite, favorite backfield of yours, Buffalo. Uh, Zach favorite Moss backfield of mine. You always go to bat for these two guys when nobody else likes them. Nobody, yeah. You know, Big Co hates them, and I don't love them. I don't know. I don't know what to do with either one of them. Like they both win because they didn't take any running backs. Uh, Zach yeah, Moss, definitely Devin winners. Singletary. We're talking winners. Huge winners. De just for reference, Zach Moss is currently 130th ADP as the RB 42 overall. Devin Singletary is uh, as the 151 ADP as the RB 48. That's pre-draft. They everybody thought for sure Buffalo was going to take ETN or somebody. They were going to definitely get a running back and improve this stable and all that. Uh, how are you feeling about your guys? Do you have one you like more than the other? Uh, uh, well, I mean, I was I was big Zach Moss and Devil Devin Singletary supporters through the off season last year, but then the lack of any sort of a semblance of a run game from Buffalo makes me slightly nervous about them. But if you're going to give me them at that range, uh, I'm kind of fine with really either one of them. Obviously I like Zach Moss, I guess a little bit more, but right now he's probably a little bit more expensive. So I'll probably would just take the cheaper option of those two guys, wherever that tends to be, or, you know, my whole thing last year was basically that I could get both of them for relatively cheap and lock up the backfield. And I probably could do the same again. And, and maybe they do decide, Hey, we need to run it a little bit more here. Uh, but who knows? They, they, they added Emmanuel Sanders and uh, they just, they just keep adding offensive pieces on that unit as well. You know, obviously Emmanuel Sanders isn't the biggest splashiest guy, but still probably has some juice left with Cole Beasley being there and Gabriel Davis breaking out and Stefan Diggs being one of the best receivers in the league. So yeah, I'll still take those guys. And I like the fact that I can get both of them and lock up a backfield and the, at the 150 between 130 and 151. Sure. Right. Which that should go up. But it probably isn't going to go up very much. But it, sh it should probably go up higher than that. Buffalo, they were only ra they were tied 17th for rushing attempts, so it wasn't like they were the worst. That is bottom half, just barely. But um, you know, Singletary definitely averaged and played more snaps than Moss. Uh, I think there was like 250 more snaps. 150 of those snaps were while Zach Moss was missing weeks three through five. Um, Singletary had a ton more targets and receptions though so that's something to note and, and like you said if you yeah one wait, was a rookie though and the other guy was in second you could trust him a little bit more that's fair that's fair and they are two completely and i think moss had types. maybe an injury of some sort yeah he missed there. he definitely missed time he missed weeks three through five uh yeah. so, so he, he was slow in the go but i like i like the idea of getting both or or the cheaper one i think that's great and I, i'd be interested to see where where those attempts came in the season because it felt like at the end of the season especially getting closer and closer to the playoffs that they basically just abandoned the run there wasn't a ton of fantasy points being scored 
uh, by either of those guys at the end of the season. And that's why, you know, that's why their ADP is so far down because no one, no one cares or likes the Bills running backs because they don't, they just want to throw it every time is what the sentiment is, even though averaged out they were just in the middle of the league but still create there's some there's some value here and and especially for those of you who like to take wide receivers early these are guys that you can be stabbing on later in the draft to to bolster your your stable let's go to carolina is yeah let's do it you liking sammy d i feel like he was a huge winner right i feel like i feel like thursday night it was his birthday. He went to sleep. He was like, damn, they didn't they didn't draft a guy in the first round. This is awesome. And then the next day, they draft him a skills position player. And then the next day they draft him another skill position player. And then the next day they give him a fifth year option. They sign they sign him up. So he's like, not only does he have the job for this year and probably next year, but he's got some more weapons and this vote of confidence. He's gonna have all offseason. It's his bet. He doesn't have to compete. It's a fresh freaking start for Sammy D. I love it. Yeah, I mean I've I've always been a Sam Sam Darnold supporter here, uh, so I definitely like the reboot in Carolina. I I hope it works. I want it to work really bad. He was one of the youngest quarterbacks out and ever, and uh, right ever so, to you know, start. I, and he's still just barely older than all these <laughs> quarterbacks that just got drafted. So just keep that in mind. You can certainly make a lot of excuses uh, for him about the team around him and just the way he's, his the way his whole time there went whether it was being sick or this or that or the third or adam gase being there and if it you know obviously if this works out adam gase is just cooked uh because it's just going to be like oh dude you just kill everything you touch um so yeah i'm 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 interested in, in sam donald in this experiment i really like matt rule i really like joe brady i really like this offense ted if teddy could throw for three thousand in this offense i think there's no excuse for Sam or have three guys at a thousand yards a piece. There's no reason that Sam Darnold can't do that. Um, and I really like, you know, they obviously get Christian McCaffrey back. So then they, they get, they, they did some offensive line upgrading. Um, so I like, I like everything that the, that the Carolina Panthers are doing where they're going and Sam, Sam Darnold, like, yeah, winner for sure. And I'm, you know, Two quarterback leagues. Let me get some Sam Darnold. One quarterback league late on a deeper bench. Yeah, sure. I'll take some. I'll take a swing on Sam Darnold. I, I really liked the player, and the, but there, it's undeniable that there was some bad play there at times. That was pretty inexcusable, regardless. So we'll see. We'll see. Well, the Jets would have just taken Kyle Pitts if they felt that way. So <laughs> they loved him. If I were the Jets, I would have kept Sam Darnold and taken Penny Sewell. Hmm. You all about that Penny Sewell? Yeah, let me get that. Let me get that. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll get to Pene Sewell here in a little bit. Shall we take it to another loser? <laughs> yeah, I think I think the loser Which, is... They didn't lose like the team didn't lose here, right? It's no. just your fantasy fun. It's fantasy play for, for real life uh, football, fantastic. But the 49ers and their running back room gets ever more crowded. They've done a great job uh, throughout the last few years of just picking up pieces that nobody cared about and just keeping the room fairly cheap for the most part. Even when they paid guys, it was like 5 million a year, 6 million a year. And, you know, they took some swings on some guys and, and missed because they got hurt and stayed hurt and yada, yada, yada. But now Mostert's come around and Jeff Wilson's come around and that we like those guys coming into the off season. And we knew that maybe they could bring in, you know, a guy in the draft. Well, then they signed Wayne Gallman, which I like Wayne Gallman. I think he's, you know, a very good, uh, Go Tigers. You know, a very good number all two kind of player all around back. guy for you. You know, you don't want him to be probably your bona fide number one, but you can give him some touches. And I think he's going to, the Niners are going to really like him. I think he just kind of does everything you want him to do. And then they go ahead and they, they trade up to draft Trey Sermon, which, you know, there are some injury concerns there. And then they double down again and, and take Elijah Mitchell um, and just really fill that room up with a bunch of cheap, really good talent. And a bunch of prospects, and I just, you know, they all they all do different things. Uh, Trey Sermon, where you're hoping that he might eventually end up being the lead dog and be the guy if he can stay healthy. But I mean, that the Niners haven't really taken that approach very much. But they've also been just plagued with injuries. But they always plug the guy in, and that's the guy you want to play. Who's ever injured and the other guys play, and that's the guy you want on your team, uh, and and to start that week. So definitely a loser for the Niners running back room as a whole. Cause what the hell are you going to do with that right now? But well, P 
people aren't going to like that because, you know, Sermon is basically the one seven now in rookie drafts being overdrafted like oh, crazy. yeah like they just are crowning him which i you know it fits really well when he's on the field it's probably going to be pretty good oh fantastic there's just so many people there we know they like a, a committee they know they like we, the, he likes to shuffle them in and out and he'll ride the hot hand but we also know that trey sermon isn't the healthiest guy and like i i don't want to just knock him for health but man there's just like so many injury concerns and we've been burned before you know, with this now, he's probably I, I thought he was going to fall further than that. The the the, the 49ers are like, nah, let me get that man. And it was kind of like, I don't know if that was like a luxury pick because they definitely didn't need him. But he's a monster. And we, we've t- said it before. Peak Sermon is great. So maybe maybe he just takes that job, runs with it, stays healthy. And, and I look like an idiot for not taking him at one six or one seven. But, man, I got to I got to take a few more guys before I uh, take certain sure. rookie drafts. Yeah. And then another a loser, right? Another loser. Jimmy G. Pour one out for Jimmy, right? Is Jimmy dead? <laughs> oh, I don't think I don't think Jimmy's dead. I, I, I think there's a really good chance that Jimmy actually plays most of the season here and the Niners are good and then he gets a second life. Like maybe maybe it's Denver. You know, who knows? Maybe it's Pittsburgh. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you know, maybe. I don't know. I think Jimmy could get a second life here because if he, if Jimmy's healthy, the Niners win. That's all really all there is to it. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. If if he gets traded beforehand, I still think he'll get a second life. I think Jimmy's just fine. He just needs to stay healthy. Um, not right. not not elite. Not elite. Not as yeah, not as not as not. handsome. Not as good as he is handsome. Teddy Bridgewater two point oh, huh? I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with a little bit more than Teddy. Yeah, um, three for sure. <laughs> So let's go to another winner. Uh, we're going over to Chicago. David uh, obviously, Montgomery, baby. Obviously, they draft Justin Fields, so that's a winner for them just as a franchise. But you know, the the, the stigma behind uh, Chicago quarterbacks is that it doesn't matter who they take; they're going to suck. Uh, but Montgomery is a, a winner here, whether people like it or not. You can suck on it. Um, Eventually, Justin Fields will be the starter. I don't know if he's going to sit or not. This is a, this is a Nagy. He's was, one was around starter. the Patrick Mahomes deal. Saw how that went down. I probably he doesn't have a year. He doesn't have a year. The boys do not have time. They maybe, maybe already not. not. They already traded up to save well, their jobs. Maybe for even year, maybe even man. part of a reason why they do play Andy Dalton because they do have a they're, they're they have a playoff roster. They just need to be okay at the quarterback position and not do dumb stuff. And then maybe eventually Justin Fields, or maybe it's just Fields all the way out. Either way, whenever Fields steps on the field, uh, Montgomery gets a boost from the rushing quarterback aspect. Um, and they, they did a, a whole bunch of other things in the draft that I like. We're in this draft, and, and the three of us share it. We're, we have David Montgomery is uh, our, now our fourth running back on the team, which is fantastic. You're just feeling so amazing about that. And we've been, we were shopping him. We were trying to acquire A.J. Brown. We were trying to, you know, get ETN. We were, we were shopping him around, and then it got to the point where, you know, should we sell him for a quarterback? I, I, it was just like, no, man, we got to keep David Montgomery. And, like, Big Co is making an argument to sell him, but, like, it was also – telling people how good he was, which like the last six or seven games of the season, I think he was the RB one overall, which I don't even need him to do that at all. I just need him to be an RB two. He'll be, I think he's guaranteed to be a high end RB two this year. You've got, you've got the dual threat QB with the cannon. They pile on more offensive linemen in the second and third round. Still got a Rob outside holding it down. Like he could be an RB one. I don't think he's going to, continue what he had at the end of last season. And they do have Tariq Cohen coming back and they drafted a super late running back and Khalil Her- Herbert. And there is some decent value right now to sell him if you want, because people are like, man, I need a running back. And you know, they come fishing, but they don't really come correct. So it's like, I don't even think that I want to sell and capitalize on him now because it could just continue in the next year. And if he's, if he's your second running back, you're feeling pretty decent about it. If he's your third running back, that's fantastic. And like he's our fourth running back, and we can start four running backs in this league. And I'm like, man, I don't want to sell Monty. Let's just roll with this dude and crush with him in the four spot because it should be awesome. Should be yeah, awesome. I agree 100%. I like that they added the lineman and then you added in the Russian quarterback. A Rob's back. So I like all that. I like yep. Tariq Cohen just being another p- player to worry about on the field. I don't really worry about him. 
you know, digging too much into Monty. Monty just keeps getting better. That's what I like to see from him. Mm. They switched play callers at the end of last season. They got a little bit of offensive line play regardless of who was there. So lots of things looking up for Monty. Uh, and that's, that's been my boys from the jump. I liked, I, he was my favorite running back out of that class. And I basically said, you, you could still take Josh Jacobs. You can't, you don't want to take Montgomery number one. Well, right now, David Montgomery looks like the number one back out of that class. Not because not, not be, if, if Josh Jacobs was getting run the proper way, I think he would put Josh Jacobs on the Raiders or on yeah. the bears <laughs> where they throw their running back the wall. Yeah. How about I bring in Drake? So that's at least yeah. we've confirmed that Miles Sanders had no business being anywhere near Saquon mm, Barkley. Mm. <laughs> All right, let's get to another winner. We're going to stay in the C team and go with the Cincinnati bungles. Mm. And I think they bungled this pick, but you did. So, so yeah, so my, my, I put this guy down on the little Joe Mixon, right? I thought he was a winner from this draft. Obviously, you think it would have been better for Joe Mixon had they taken Sewell and not Chase there with the fifth. Yeah, game. I would have. If I'm the Bengals, I'm my quarterbacks. We talked about this last week. My quarterbacks rehabbing from an ACL here, man. Like I'm picking up this potential generational left tackle here, and I'm going to lock that up. And you know, we could have figured out another receiver in the second round or third round or whatever. I mean, I got it. You went and picked up an, a lineman in the second round, but. I just yeah, they, they I don't think a, you, a strong a strong decent lineman uh, out of Clemson Jackson Carmen. Yeah. Well, I mean, no Tigers. Just, just you had a chance at something crazy, so yeah, I think I think you should have went there. I mean, Jamar Chase is awesome, and he played with Burrow, so that's fantastic. I like all of those things. The offense, obviously, it's great to have. Now you have awesome, three awesome wide receivers uh, for the Bengals, but I think Joe Mixon is a huge winner here. Uh, no more Geo. They. I didn't really bring anybody in and you know they did upgrade the offensive line and they had a, a, a former first round pick uh rehabbing and getting better as well and, and jonah williams um so cincinnati hopefully looking up here at burrow is fantastic you know just kept them boys in every game fighting but i'd like to see him be kept upright uh with with the best potential that you could possibly get on that offensive line anyway Still, still, he's got to, he's got to be a winner though, right? I mean, oh, absolutely, Chase, a winner, 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 chicken dinner for sure. Chase like, helps him out, even if not as maybe not as much as the offensive lineman does. But they didn't take any other running backs. They they picked up an undrafted free agent, and and there's not much behind Joe Mixon. And this offense got better. They have been hey, making. P rides behind him. True, true. Samaj and Travion and Travion. Samaji and Travion. They should be on this list, winners. <laughs> Uh, Jamar Chase awesome. wins, right? He reunites with with uh, his boy and Burrow, and and if Chase, let me just throw this out there: if Chase is falling in your rookie draft, if if people are taking Pitts and Javante Williams over Chase, and he falls to one four or one five, like you got to try and do anything you can to move up and try and get some a slightly cheaper Chase. Now he might be going one one or one two, depending on your draft. But most drafts, people need the running back. And so they're taking, I've seen them, I'm seeing them fall a little bit. We got gifted J chase at one five and people were sending us mad offers. It was like, man, let's just take chase. Cause that's a yeah. gift. So we if he falls him. to you pounce, um, should we take it to some losers that might be on yeah, this well, team? I don't know which one. A, it's a little, I think there could be a slight caveat on this. We got a winners right. on, on once on, on in the running back position, but on the loser side. Yeah. I mean, I guess T Higgins T and, and Tyler Boyd, right. And and so who's gonna lose the most out of that that that, that group, right? T's already yeah. pretty expensive. I don't. Th I think he he's super young. He's gonna be there longer, right? Tyler Boyd, on the other hand, they have a potential out with him after this year, or they could just pay him a decent amount of money. Um, but I'm I'm gonna go with Tyler Boyd as a loser here. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, I I would say both probably have a little bit of potential loss loss in him it's going to be hard for me to make a case to say t higgins is going to come out of here being joe burrow's number one dog when he already has a rapport with i mean obviously he just played with t and it was great and they've been in the league together for a year mm -hmm. so i mean i guess you could you could view that either way uh but you know joe went out of his way to to try to get jamar on that team um and they, they got a lot of capital and invested in him um, so I think he's going to try to make himself and the team look good there. But 
I mean, it's going to be a fun offense for sure. I think both of them probably take a little bit of a hit. And I think Boyd already kind of maybe took us, took a slight hit in general. So maybe they keep on coming a little bit for him. But I think the, the good news is, is Burrow, I believe, is one of those quarterbacks who can support, you know, multiple skill positions at a, at a fairly high level. So, um, you know, maybe 60 I don't, touchdowns, Joe Burrow. Let's go. Let's do it. I was himself. really excited about drafting T Higgins. I thought he was a good value right now, but now, you know, probably going to maybe go down a couple of picks possibly. Definitely. And I could see Tyler boy uh, dropping a decent amount too. So Tyler Boyd's at 69 T Higgins is at 35. So maybe get a little bit yeah, better deal on T really loving some T Higgins right there, but the late third, but, uh, now that now that there's another potential target hog can't take i don't think i could take him there so all right well let's take it to a wiener let's get back on the winning track here all right winners we got detroit they they don't win much but they won tj hawkinson yeah. uh tj hawkinson was a big winner for me you know they brought in saint brown which you know we no talked one. about that on yeah. the last podcast but Decent i think, feel like hawkinson could just be a big safety valve and and just be a, a vacuum for for targets here uh so i feel great about tj hawkinson obviously you should have been trying to acquire him regardless because he's great but i'm even more into it now uh especially in premium and then deandre swift obviously uh they send out carry on johnson uh, they do bring in Jamal Williams, uh, but DeAndre Swift. And then, and then on top of that, they reap the benefits of the Bengals not taking Penny Sewell, and they snatch up Penny Sewell. The, the, uh, the, the head coach and the GM are building it from the inside out, which I love that. Um, and I think Swift is just going to be – they're just going to really lean on him a good bit uh, this year. So, you know, huge win for Swift here for, for not having a regime change and then bringing in, you know, anybody crazy. Completely agree. Let's move along. All right. What do you got next? Hmm. Tua, Miami. Tua's Let's a wiener. Tua. Let's go Tua, Miami. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tua wins, right? Gets his boy Jalen Waddle. They're surrounding him with talent. A little um, more offseason help, right? They they brought in Will Fuller. For so, sure. Like yeah, that. That, that, that. That adds into it, sure. Uh, and then, I mean, the obvious one here. Is Miles Gaskin uh, because they didn't take a running back and then he dodged a carry on bullet. You know, it could be <laughs> another, couple, another couple bullets in the chamber coming out in this offseason. But I mean, they did take Miles dokes Gaskin. in the in the seventh round. So he's a big, big bruising back, uh, big, about 230 ish, a uh, bit, a little bit bigger guy. They do have a weird stable of guys. They brought in Malcolm Brown in the offseason and, and they still have uh, Ahmed. Uh, and I believe Laird is probably still on the squad. So they do have a bunch of teams, but it did seem like Miles Gaskin probably wiggled his way through there of being, you know, still decent, a decent player for you here. Uh, much like the Niners, they have a bunch of cheap uh, players on there and kind of playing it a little smart. But I, I feel you. I think Miles Gaskins was definitely a winner in this situation, as albeit with, you know, just as long as he's healthy. So. Yeah, we did a video a little while ago called Miles Gaskin to hold or not to hold. And I believe that we made the argument just to hold. So if you if you if you were on the fence, now's a decent Steady. time. Steady. Or you just hold Steady. It. Yeah. Love it. Let's take it to a loser. That's a little brave heart for you. Yeah. <laughs> loser. Which big it was night one, biggest loser was everywhere. James Robinson of the Duval County Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, bit of a bummer for him. I, I said, you know, he is a loser right now. It sucks. You could tell the coach speak says that they're going to be, you know, two guys and yada, yada, yada. And I feel James Robinson may have, you know, a decent role here, but ETN fits exactly what they're trying to do. Gives them a lot more speed, which is urban is, is a speed kind of guy. They have Schottenheimer there and they have Bevel there who, them, them boys like to run, and, and Urban's going to be probably a kind of spread you out speed guy. So be interesting to see. I'd be buying James Robinson, though, and because I still think he's a good player and seeing how that goes. You know, he's only on the team, I think, for one more year, and then he's a restricted free agent possibly. No, he um, was a rookie so, last year, so that's four years. Yeah, but he's year. an undrafted free agent. Oh. Uh, 
So I don't, I don't know exactly. I should have looked up the, the context of the deal here. Uh, but James Robinson, I would be buying and just stashing him away because I do think there is a good player there. And maybe people are going to be really uh, disheartened about what happened. And I, he may even still He's be used on Jacksonville this year. Yeah. He's dead as far as anyone's concerned. That's what I like. That's what I like to hear. That's when I want to pounce on guys. That's why we do this. Um, and you're right. They do have one more year. He's he's yeah. basically in a contract in a contract year. I think he's no no no. He has one agent. more year. He has one more year in twenty two that he signed for mad cheap. Right. And so, I mean he doesn't need to be there. Come. Yeah. They could he move could on if they wanted else. to, or they could try to trade him. Like. Get some value for him. Who knows? But I'm 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 trading for James Robinson if I can. Maybe they trade him to the Falcons. Miles. Who Davis. else you got? Who else you got on this list? Chris Carson, baby. He won. Ooh. No, they didn't take a running back, which they didn't really have an opportunity to. I think they had like one pick or something. I think they had three picks, but short list of draft uh candidates for Seattle. Chris Carson just every year, every year gets disrespected and every year outperforms his value or perceived value and yes who's back 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 penny's back back and he's back, back. Yeah. okay well <laughs> they didn't bring it they didn't, they didn't pick up the fifth year option though yeah and we've done this before with penny i'm not worried about penny is if chris carson's healthy they know what they got in him then that they, they want to do that and he can catch some balls and they're scoring opportunities chris carson man every chris year carson baby gonna be good value for you and and some uh and some drafts here, especially redraft. I feel like, yeah. Um, another loser, Jamison Crowder gets uh, bit by the Elijah Moore bug here, and just the fact that the they the Jets just went ahead and just brought in a whole new cast of characters around there. I do like what like what the Jets are doing, but I, I don't know how like Crowder's what the Jets are doing. I don't know how Crowder's going to fare here, and and what's going to be the plight of of Jamison Crowder. But I got to pour one out because that's been my guy for a while. Yeah, and anytime Crowder's been healthy, he's mad outperformed his value. So hope you had a little bit of Crowder on your team over the years. You're welcome. But I do think he probably, I think he can become a Ju- post June one uh, cut cap and, cash. Yeah, so they can cut him with only one million dead, or they have to pay him ten million. So I could see so he could be like, birthed new life and rise like a phoenix from the ashes, <laughs> or go somewhere. Worse than the Jets? Never mind. His value's going up if he gets cut. So, <laughs> and that's the maybe, thing. Like, I, I don't maybe know. Maybe a sneaky buy window for Jamison Crowder. I like it. I like this. That there is never not a sneaky buy window for Jamison Crowder. Like, uh, he could be had on the low any time of year, any place, anywhere. And I don't get it. Just like Cole Beasley, I don't. People just hate him. I'm not sure why. So all he does is perform when he's healthy, but I don't, I don't want to, I don't, even if he stayed with the jets, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I want to like Zach Wilson, but it's just the jets, man. It's the fucking jets. How can you feel great about anything going on with the jets? But they got Adam Gase out of there. I like Denzel Mims. Let's go Zach Wilson. I want, let's go jets. Come on. But I can't, well, let's get it's going to literally let me down. Stay in New York for more losers after this. <laughs> um, and Aries Tony body bags, a couple of wide receivers. Sterling Shepard's dead. Darius Slayton's dead. Tony's dead. The Giants suck. Gettleman, Gettleman's. Everyone hates the Giants. Is yeah. there really a winner? There can't be any winners. They're all losers with the Gettleman. Well, the only winner is Danny, Daniel Jones. Because if, again, if he doesn't succeed here, like you're going to know, you should figure it out before the season's over, whether what, what, you, what else you have to do. So I applaud the Giants because they don't give a shit about our fantasy team for surrounding him with as much talent as possible here. Um, and yeah, so Slayton that, that hurts a little bit. We'll see what happens with Sterling Shepard. I've always had a soft spot for both of those guys. I made some late, some fourth round acquisitions on, on Slater and some FFPCs with on big Slayton. go on Slayton. Yeah. Just to, cause people were cutting them and I, I picked them up. So that was a little bit of a bummer uh, that, that Tony went there. I do really like Tony. We really like Tony. Um, but you know, definitely We're like the only people that like Tony, us and the Giants. That those are the only some, people. Oh, and all the all the teams that had a pick after Tony got taken, they all liked him too. But nobody on their draft Twitter likes Tony. So no, no suck no. it, haters. We've been over this. We've been over yeah. this. Uh so yeah, definitely wide receivers for the Giants, a little bit of a loser there. But let's shift over to another big winning wide receiver, A.J. Brown, the number one dynasty fantasy football 
guy in America for the wide receiver position, AJ Brown. In my opinion. Yeah, you I don't know that I want to I don't know that I'll take AJ Brown first. Let me get him. Holler at your boy. Seems like a lot, but number they one, didn't do anything. They didn't do anything. They didn't. They didn't bring in wide receivers. They let Corey Davis go, and they brought in targets. Josh Reynolds. They brought in Josh Reynolds, which we all like, Josh Reynolds. But we'll see. And they did. They did they traded. I think two or three picks uh, to pick up Des Fitzpatrick from Louisville, who was on the same team uh, as Tutu Atwell, I believe. Mm. Uh, I believe I, from yeah. from just a brief couple of readings he out gained two two at well in yards per catch by a few a few percentage points like 16.3 and 16.8 so Settled they did it. so that's a fun stab right now and like your third rounds of rookie drafts fourth rounds of rookie draft as Fitzpatrick because they didn't do anything but AJ Brown to the fucking moon right he's already struggling for mad amounts of targets and doing a lot with not a ton and just crushing after the catch and crushing. Oh, that's why he's the man. Plays. Yeah. Right. And so he should only get more volume now. And that can only be awesome. It can only help. It can only be great. So stock up AJ Brown. If it could even go any higher. Uh, this one, this one's near and dear to the heart for us. We just threw him on here. Losers. <laughs> Benny Snell. Benny. He dodged a lot of bullets. He couldn't dodge them all. Now, listen, if you thought that Benny Snell was going to come into the year as the lead back, you, 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 I don't know what you were thinking. Because, I mean, we were really high on Benny Snell coming out of the draft. We were proponents of taking him, like, in the third round of your rookie draft. Yeah, really and high then, is probably aggressive, but we I mean, liked him a lot more. Nobody than else people, liked him. Yeah. Like, on Matt Kelly's page, it's, it's Benny Snell. And then he got the job last year and he took the snail pack off of Benny on player profiler. And now he's like fast all of a sudden. And then he was all on the Benny Snell train. You got to get Benny Snell. I'm like, you couldn't stand this guy a year ago. And now he's everything like it, it just it got like you knew the Steelers weren't going to come into this season with Anthony McFarlane and Benny Snell as their star as their main guys so definitely not but i still wanted to recognize all right yeah because he he's a great backup he's like he's he's not he's a good all-around player but he just i don't think he can carry he he can't carry the team and if he thought he was gonna carry this backfield he wasn't going to but shout out to my man benny for outliving pretty much most everyone else's expectations good for you buddy and uh let's pull one out for him they also take a tight end in pittsburgh right so ebron I mean, it's a rookie, so he'd probably be all yeah. right this year. Yeah, uh, big, 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 big target. Uh, Ebron perpetually hated on, though, so, you know, mm -hmm. people aren't going to like that. Ebron's half decent, half decent player here, but Friar Muth is uh, Pac-Manning his way uh, on Ebron's uh, behind here. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we'll see what happens there. Situation anyway, to monitor, we'll call that. Couple of losers, Benny Snell, Eric Ebron, pour it out. Love you, Benny. Boop, Benny. Boop, 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 boop. Take it to one more winner. One more winner. Antonio. The guy who only had 77 career attempts. He I wouldn't be any good. The guy just wins. He just fucking wins. He's Antonio just like one Gibson. of the most efficient running backs in the whole league last year. Antonio. Seems like he Scored on every touch. I don't know. They didn't give him very many touches, but when he did, it was 10 yards, and it was just easy. It's so easy for him to get 10 yards like that. It's just incredible. And, you know, they it's go up, your breath player. Right. They picked up some old linemen in this draft. They picked up a key defensive uh, linebacker in the first round, so that helps their defense play even better than they were, and that's what Ron Vera wants to do is run that ball. They didn't take any running backs, so they, they got to give him some more work coming in the next year. Oh, yeah. That's what we're looking for because he's so Gibson, damn good baby. with the ball in his hands. So had to get a shout out to Antonio Gibson. Antonio Gibson. And I mean, you know, the, the quarterback position gets upgraded. The offense gets upgraded with B Diami Brown coming in, Curtis uh, Samuel coming in. So, you know, less attention on, on that running back potentially. Uh, so, you know, offense should get more dynamic. And Ritzy Fitzy, you know, for everything that he is, he can at least facilitate some sort of an offense some weeks. So, um, Antonio Gibson, big winner all around. Absolutely. And then hopefully the last 
little piece on this list doesn't come to fruition. But there's going to be a lot of losers in Green Bay if Aaron Rodgers holds out or doesn't play or gets traded. So, yeah, it's gonna, it's everybody loses. Everybody loses. Yeah. It's the opposite of Oprah. What are you doing with Devontae Adams right now? You can't, you can't sell him, right? Well, I Can mean, I feel like him? everybody's probably trying to sell him a little bit, but would yeah, you probably, buy Devontae Adams for cheap? If, if I felt, well, I mean, I don't think it's going to be like cheap. So, I mean, it's still going to be, you just might have lost a first off the multiple firsts that it might have taken to get him. So, right. You know, if I feel really good about my team, I guess, I don't know. I, I don't know. I can't answer that question right now. I'm not doing anything. I'm if, just if, right, chilling. Right. It feels like, from what I hear, he's going to probably play one more year with the Packers. He's Seems probably got likely. one more year with the Packers. So sell in season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sell all your Packers in season after a good week. I mean, unless you're chasing the shit, which hopefully you are. And that's, that's you know, that's why we're so running back proponent heavy. Maybe Jordan loves the man and nobody misses a beat. Yeah, I mean, they would have already moved on then. They would have traded his ass. Like, they obviously don't think that Jordan Love's ready to come in there and put them where they want to, where they just were and where they could still be with Aaron Rodgers at the helm. And they're talking, you know, I heard they made him a strong, you know, extension and offer. And it's like, they're not going to be extending him if they're loving Jordan Love right now. But uh, what can you do? He's mad. You need him. I don't know what's going to happen. It feels like he's going to play. I can't see Aaron Rodgers not being in a Packers uniform next year. But the year after that, I guess, if they don't extend him, he doesn't have any guaranteed money on his contract. They could get rid of him. They could trade him for a ton. Maybe they trade him before the season's over. But that's why we're. That's why the Packers' skill position players made this list. The whole team makes the damn list. Tight. They're exactly. losers if, how, if Aaron Rodgers goes away and everybody the knows coach, The coach. Yeah, exactly. All right, you got anything else? I'm hot. I'm ready to go. Yeah, I'm hot too, man. It's just getting hot in Charleston this time of year. <sighs> All right, y'all. Thanks for listening. If you're listening on the podcast, hit us with that five-star review. Please, if you made this far into the video, hit that subscribe button. Leave us with a comment. Tell us if we missed anybody. Uh, tell us if you're mad. Throw some love. If you, We love the love, man. When someone says something nice, it's so nice because there's so much hate in the world. I just love hearing you guys thanks for all the effort like you're welcome man appreciate you appreciate me uh we'll we'll catch you next time kids we'll be back i don't know but the mocks are coming soon i don't know if it's next but it's coming soon so be on the lookout thanks for everyone peace